Hello everybody, Patty V here, and today we are going to be removing the integrated heat spreader, or de-lidding, an Intel Core i7-4770K CPU. There's a few different methods that I've seen this done. Anything from the razor blade method, where you get a razor blade between the circuit board and the heat spreader, you work each corner, kind of work your way around to loosen up the glue and then pry it off. Uh, I seen a video where somebody held a hair dryer to it to soften up the adhesive. Not sure if it's actually legit or not. Uh, I'd have to look more into that. Uh, or, of course, as we're going to do today, there is the vice method. Now, the whole reason, the whole theory behind this is because with the, the Haswell processors and I think like the Ivy Bridge processors, I think they uh, went from using silver solder on the actual die underneath the heat spreader to using some sort of crappy thermal compound, which results in uh, higher temperatures, especially when you're overclocking. I have a full-on custom water cooling set up uh, from coolants in my PC, and my idle temperatures are still at about 35 degrees Celsius, and when I run Prime 95, they get up into the low 70s. I've seen 71, 72 degrees Celsius, and to me, it just does, doesn't quite seem right for a water-cooled setup, especially considering that my graphics card barely reaches over 45 degrees Celsius under max load. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a try and see what kind of a difference it makes. So underneath the integrated heat spreader, the actual CPU die is a, is a rectangle, and it runs in this direction perpendicular to where you see these tabs, which actually works out pretty nicely because I can rest these tabs on the top of the vice jaws, and then it gives me some more wiggle room for when it actually breaks loose. So rather than having it along its ends and then I smack the end once it comes loose, I got a little bit of room for, you know, for movement. So we have our vice. And then I have put electrical tape on the jaws of the vise. I did two layers on each side, and it should be enough to keep it from mangling up or scratching or anything, the uh, integrated heat spreader. We have a block of wood, a 2x4, you know, something solid and square will work, and a hammer. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to gently place the heat spreader into the vice jaws. I've got the vice jaws spread just enough to get the heat spreader in but so that those tabs can rest on top. So if we've got them placed pretty nice, get it nice and centered, and then once it once you're uh once you start feeling the pressure, any sort of resistance, don't clamp it down very hard. You don't really need to. It's holding solid, nice nice and solid in place. You don't want to warp or crush the heat spreader because when you go to put it back on it's all crushed up you're going to have practically no contact with your heat sink or you'll have just very limited contact you want to keep it as intact as possible so with that let's go ahead and get started so i'm going to try to maintain a nice even line keep it parallel with the surface of the circuit board and I'm going to start out soft so I don't want to hit it too hard and have it go flying and we're going to see uh, we'll see what happens see if this works just like everybody else says it does I might have to tighten it up just oh actually another thing to be careful of don't do it too loose so that it ends up coming out Make sure your vice is tightened up on your bench. All right. There we go. Didn't take very much at all, actually, and then it just came loose. And there is your freshly de-lidded Haswell processor. So, 
what kind of adhesive did they actually use? You know, this actually feels a lot like RTV silicone. So perhaps that hair dryer method, well, RTV silicone is de genu generally designed for pretty high temperatures. And looking at the temperatures you're getting with your uh, CPU, even under max load, I don't think the hair dryer would probably do too much. It's possible. It's something I have to experiment with, but who knows, really. You're just going to want to scrape all that off of there, and then actually let's go ahead and take a look at the heat spreader itself. Take a look at the underside. There's all your there's thermal compound. It doesn't look that great. So we're going to redo that. And we're going to see what kind of temperatures we get. I'll update the uh, video description uh, with my before and after temperatures at both idle and at load. Uh, before doing this, my idle temp temperature was about 34-35 uh, degrees Celsius and 100% uh, load, running Prime 95. I was hitting about 71-72 degrees Celsius. So, we'll see if this makes a difference. Thanks for watching.